Hello, my name is BJ Paris. Welcome to Tapping Into His Treasures. How is everybody? I hope you're all doing well. I'm celebrating Memorial Day today in the United States. And uh, lest we forget, lest we forget. Made me think of my um, four Costello uncles, uh, my mother's brothers, uh, who were all in the military at the same time in the 1940s. And of course, I had some um, uh, uncles on my my dad's side too. Of course, lots of them. Um, but I guess why the other ones were on my mind uh, the last couple of days is because I have this great big picture of them, humongous, this big and that wide. It's like a square with all four uncles on the one photograph. Actually, I used to have it. I gave it to one of my cousins because his father was in there. So it made me think of the stories that were passed down to us. Um, that when my grandparents uh, were alive, of course, in the 40s, when my uncles all joined the military, I think they were all in the Marines, but a couple, one or two of them could have been in the Army, I'm not sure. But to have all four of her sons enlist at the same time, it was too much on my grandmother. I may have mentioned this to you last year, the year before, but um, she took it to the newspapers and everything and she fought it. And there was nothing she could do about it. Um, thank God, thank God that none of them were killed in battle. Um, I think it was World War II, if I remember correctly, and none of them were killed, thank God. But for the ones who were killed and gave their lives for our freedom, uh, we want to remember what they did and to remember the families that gave up their loved ones for all of us. It kind of reminds me of another story. <laughs> Guess what? Guess what the other story is? Of course, Jesus Christ. He gave up his life for us willingly. And if you want to get right down to the facts, he wouldn't have suffered as much if he was shot and killed in a matter of a couple of seconds or one second, but he went through so much physical suffering and emotional suffering. First of all, the long, long way up the hill to Golgotha where he was hung and with those uh, nails driven into his feet, into his uh, hands, not his hands per se, but that little section right here and uh, even if it were, were her hands, were his hands, I had something done, a surgery done on my hand one time, right in the middle of my hand. And it was the worst pain that could, it's, it's beyond imagination. So he suffered for us. So Father God, we're remembering your son Jesus today, along with all the other fellow Americans who gave their lives. And also when I went out for lunch today at the dining hall, um, with the hotel, in the hotel. <laughs> um, I happened to mention to a couple of the guys at the table that I've been really obsessed with the Kennedy videos and the Kennedy movies these last couple of weeks, learning so much about the, um, the family, all the family members, not only the Kennedy children, but the grandchildren and the daughters-in-law, sons-in-law, and so forth. And so today's uh, May 30th, and the fellow sitting diagonally from me said, um, today's his birthday. And I thought, wow, that's not a coincidence for me to be talking about John F. Kennedy on today's date, and you're telling me that it's his birthday. Well, I came home and I looked it up on the net, and yesterday was his birthday, May 29th. But it was still close enough that I think he heard me in heaven or something. Because people don't talk about the Kennedys anymore like they did years ago. And for me to bring that up today, May 30th, and to have the fellow say to me it's his birthday and be just 24 hours away from his birthday or less, uh, I thought that was pretty close. It was just a little, um, what would you call it, little God jam or God wink, if you will. So, here we go. 
Um, I was reading some of my notes today because I like to build myself up. And if, if you are a follower of Christ and you've never did any journaling or built yourself up on purpose, uh, it might be a good time to start. And uh, so I was building myself up. <clears throat> you can bear with me because um, it wasn't very long ago that I got the um, shot from my bones. And every time I get the shot, every six months, um, I lose my voice. So my, I have the throat problem. So just bear with me, if you will. So what I was reminded to do in going through my notes and journals is God wants to bless us. And he wants not only to bless us, but to use us as blessings to others. Well, some of them, some people, it's the story of their lives, blessing people, be it financially, be it help with groceries, uh, make a dinner for somebody who just had a baby, um, just any number of things. So uh, one thing that I did this week, and uh, you may not consider it a blessing per se, but it, I'm looking back on this uh, thing that I did, which I'll tell you about in a minute. Uh, looking back on it, to me it was a blessing for me to bless somebody. And what I did was, and I hope, I hope there are others out there that do the same thing. I have been thinking about this uh, gal that I was raised with. Uh, she, lived, she and her family lived two houses away in the city, Bridgeport, Connecticut. And of course my other girlfriend lived across the street and you've heard me talk about her a lot. But uh, the other one I haven't been in touch with for six, over 60 years. And I, I had tried to contact her or make contact with her a long time ago, um, starting about 25 years ago. And at one point in time I did contact by phone that I got from the internet, her, her nephew. And of course I grew up with the, this person's father as well. And um, I was a little nervous. Usually I'm not nervous about things like that, but I don't, I know when we were little, we would play baseball together and all that with all the neighborhood kids. But in our teenage years, I don't remember uh, having such a close relationship with her, so I didn't know how it was going to go. So I was a little nervous, and um, I didn't even I didn't even know how to start all over again looking for her because I couldn't remember her husband's name. He was like from sort of the same neighborhood, and I I knew he had um, a nickname, so I didn't know what his real name was, and it was like a meeting a closed door all the time. I was ready to give up again. And I was lying in bed one night and the name came to me. The name of the person came to me. And I'm going like, wow. So I had tried using that name on the search bar of the computer before without any luck. So this time I wrote the name that was given to me while I was lying in bed. And after that I wrote obituary. I wrote the state initials, CCT. And then I wrote obituary. Well, sure enough, his obituary showed up, which gave me the other information that I was looking for. And in addition to that other information, his son's name came up with a phone number, not on the obituary, but when I did further, further um, investigating, uh, the son's name came up with the phone number. So I tried to call the phone number. And I got the voicemail. Wait to hear this. I got the voicemail and I'm identifying myself as, uh, with my maiden name and telling the person, whoever the phone belonged to, that um, I used to be neighbors with so-and-so. And all of a sudden somebody picked up the phone and this woman's voice on the other end of the phone said, how the hell are you? <laughs> I think it was the most fantastic greeting I've ever gotten in my life. How the hell are you? And sure enough, it was the person I had been looking for for 25 years. Yeah, so needless to say, we talked for two hours. And I told her who died, who lived on the same street, 
how many kids this one had and that one had. And I was blessed. And surely she was blessed too. So actually it was God blessing her. And he just used me as an instrument. And I'm just I'm just passing that on, hoping that somebody else might try to do the same thing, to bring a little bit of joy into somebody's life. It doesn't have to be that extreme, but you know, God will give you something wherever you are, wherever wherever you are as far as comfortability in doing something like that, God will give something uh, precisely for you to bless somebody else. Just get out there. Get out there. Um, you might call, if you're not comfortable doing something like that, you might call that, oh, what book is it in the Bible? Oh, oh. It's when the, it's when Joshua and Caleb went into the, the land to check out the land, remember? And um, they described it to their people as a land of giants. So doing something like this might be a giant to you, but, but, but these men stood up and they, they didn't go by sight. They just did what God told them to do and they went in the land and uh, investigated the people, what they could find as far as food. Everything they found was very big, was magnified in uh, any of the food that they had previously eaten, even grapes in a bunch, were all magnified. So to them it was the land of the giants. Well, don't take trying to bless somebody out of this clear blue. Don't, don't see that as a giant that you can't capture or take hold of or use to bless somebody. Don't take it. Don't go by sight. Just let God use you. Get out there. Get out there. As a matter of fact, uh, stretching what I just shared into a different area. Uh, if you do have a giant that you're fighting, um, that is really and truly a big giant, uh, it may be a situation, uh, don't go by sight. If you have the Lord, don't go by sight. Hold on, hold on. Hi. Hello. Hi, honey. Just checking to see if you had a baby. Yes, I did, honey. Thank you. I'm, I'm chuckling over here because I do a weekly TV show for public yeah. access, and uh, usually one of the girls comes in while I'm sharing with the audience. Oh. You want to be on TV? Oh, you're oh. Come on, honey. No, that's okay. <laughs> Tamara's here. Come on, Tamara. Oh. <laughs> Wave to the audience in the camera. Hi. This is Tamara, my friend. <laughs> Thank you. Have a nice afternoon. You too. She closed the door. Okay, there she goes. Yeah, they come in, and they pass out. They pass out the um, the menus for the dining room and things like that. I call this the hotel. <laughs> so she's Tamara. Okay, so we we said don't go by sight. And uh, don't go by sight. Dash dash. Because God says in his word, I will go before you and make the crooked places straight. And also he will fight for you. Well, wow, don't you just love it? Well, wow. Susie Q. I have a note that says Susie Q to tell you about. And I can't remember what it's about. Susie Q. Oh, here it comes. I just read this today online. And um, what do you call that? The, it's it's the, the Bing program online. And they just came back under Copilot or something like that. And it's on everybody's computer. Makes me crazy sometimes. Uh, I'm starting to enjoy it a little bit more. And it's on email now too. So somebody asked if there were spirits at the great at the cemetery on the stones and somebody wrote this in it might be for somebody um, before we go on um, this man wrote in to answer that question he wrote into the whole Facebook audience 
or email audience, whatever. And he said, this is something that happened to him. No, it was a woman. It was a woman. And she said that her mother passed away. And both times that she went to visit the, the mother's grave at the cemetery, um, she left the, uh, left saying her prayer, or talking to her mother, whatever, to get into her car to drive away. And right when she got on the car and started it up, she turned on the radio. And the song that was playing was named Susie Q. I don't, I, I don't think it's a familiar song to me, but it was it maybe years ago, I don't know. The song playing was Susie Q. And what do you suppose the woman's name was? Sue, Susie. And her mother used to call her Sue's. And she just knew that was a sign from her mother. And uh, the same thing happened to this woman by the name of Sue a second time. And uh, so there's a lot to be said for that. I know it happens to me all the time. I don't get carried away with it. But at uh, the same time, I do acknowledge it. Yeah. I call them God gems or God wings. You've heard me say that before. So just keep that in your mind. And it just happened today. So I had to throw that out to you. Okay. Okay, here's another verse for you. I have a couple more later. 2 Corinthians 3.18 And we with our unveiled faces reflect like mirrors the brightness of the Lord. Have you ever thought of yourself as being a reflection of Christ the Lord? Well, you are. If you're one of the Lords, you definitely are. Right? And uh, from there, I'm going to switch to um, just a couple more pages from the book I was reading to you last time. It's the last book that I wrote. I'm not even going to show you the title of it because uh, I'm not advertising it. We're not supposed to advertise. So I was just reading this this morning for the first time in 25 years, this particular section. And it's toward the very end of the book. And I just thought I'd like to read it to you. Maybe God is calling you to change jobs. It could be anything. Maybe he's calling you. Maybe he wants you to move, move, physically move geographically to follow his call. Maybe you love your job and your initial thoughts after hearing from him are not good ones, but you quickly make a decision to trust God and to obey him. Maybe you are a part of God's plan and he wants to bring about reconciliation in your life. You never know why God leads us to do things. Maybe you are resisting him. Maybe you are tempted to hold on to your stubbornness, but the Holy Spirit won't let you have peace and you become cognizant of what the devil is doing in your emotions and you give it up. You ask God to go before you, and you bring him glory by following him, by reconciling, if that is the case. And you end up being the recipient of happiness and peace beyond your understanding. I'm going to stop there for a minute. How many of us have experienced that? We don't want to do something, but when we obey God and we do it, it's all for our benefit. It's all for us and not even for the Father. Okay, to continue. Called out ones have something in common. They are under scrutiny by the Holy Spirit. Don't you just love that? They are under scrutiny by the Holy Spirit. Because he never leaves us, not for a second. If they are using their eyes, ears, or mouth for something that is not pleasing to God, they experience instant conviction. They recognize God in everything. If something seems coincidental, they know that it is not. No coincidences in God's plan. They know that it is not. They are extremely cognizant of the end times and that sinners need to be saved before Christ comes back or they will face an eternity in hell. Called, one, called out ones have a heart for souls and pray frequently for the lost. The word says, that when more is given to a person, more is expected of that person. 
called out ones expect to make plenty of sacrifices for God's kingdom. Their time is no longer their own. Just like the old country doctors who refused to go home after hours until all their scheduled patients and all the ones who showed up with no appointment who had to be squeezed in were all taken care of. You've all seen the old movies. We know that to be true. Called out ones, but all those in need and all the ones God brings to them every day at all hours in front of themselves and minister unceasingly. They give money to the hurting out of their own needs. In return, they are given treasures, large doses, large doses of divine favor, honor, endless storehouses in their soul, storehouses of wisdom and knowledge, storehouses of God's secrets. They are given a keen sensitivity to hear from the Lord, and they possess God's anointing. They are given a tremendous amount of blessings. They are given dreams and visions, which are the ultimate joy in this life. Anyone who has been called out spends an enormous amount of time studying. They keep God's principles on their heart. They keep his teaching as the apple of their eye. Proverbs 7, 1. You speak excellent and princely things, and the opening of your lips shall be for right things. Proverbs 8, 6. How much better to get skillful and godly wisdom than gold? Proverbs 16, 16. That I may cause... <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry. That I may cause those who love me to inherit true riches and that I may fill their treasuries. Proverbs 8, 21. Called out ones are concerned, as the Apostle Paul was in Romans 10, 1, that souls might be saved. And like others who have gone before us, we are willing to make fools of ourselves for Christ's sake. If you are a Christian contemplating moving, consider these words that God gave to me. Break up uncultivated ground. Do not sow amongst thorns. Hosea 10, 12. And it doesn't have to be moving. It could be anything that God leads you to do. It's usually not moving. It could be any number of things. Remember that if we are in the place that God calls us, God sends his anointing, and he goes ahead of us to pave the way. Get pregnant with what you pray for. Nothing to do with uh, giving birth to a baby. Get pregnant with what you pray for. So when you, when ladies, when you are pregnant, you know that you have to take special care of your body and take care of that baby. It's in utero, but yeah, it's up to you to take care of it. So if God gives you something to be born into your life, something to do for him, get pregnant with what you pray for, okay, or what God is calling you to do. Embrace the call. It's yours. Claim it. Do you have a calling on your life? Embrace it. Claim it. This is what I have chosen to do. Whether I see the results of my work in my lifetime does not matter. I must do what I was called to do. So I hope some of that uh, applies to you, some of those thoughts. And uh, we just do it as to the Lord as the Holy Spirit leads and, uh, and let God do what he will with whatever it is that we're working on for him. So I'll wait. I have some prayers now that we have done. Ooh, it's gotten close. It's cutting close. I wanted to, um, I'm going to skip the Lord's Prayer for a little while too, like I did the last time, as I got too close to the end. Some things I don't want to forget about when we pray, to remind you not to forget about also, to pray for the presence of God in our lives. And uh, I kind of do these things, and we all kind of do these things without it's almost like our prayers are rehearsed. And I'm guilty of that too sometimes. And I have to be reminded, even if they are my own notes, journaling that's reminding me. 
And this one I just came across. Pray for the presence of God in our lives. Yes, we know he's there. We know his presence is with us, but to pray for it is something entirely different. So I'm just uh, leaving that with you right now. Uh, to pray for godly attitudes and pray for us to be peaceable so that as ever looking in at our lives will see that we are peaceable people. So repeat. Pray for godly attitudes and for God to make us peaceable. Pray for God to accelerate things in our lives. Are you praying for something and you're waiting and waiting and nothing's happening? I hear this all the time. I do. I hear it and I read it all the time. Well, what about praying for God to accelerate things in our life? It's just a different way of looking at things. And heck, do it. What's it going to hurt to add that to our prayers? Pray for God to accelerate things in our life. Father, I'm praying that right now. And um, let's see. I, I really, ever since watching a Clint Eastwood movie the other night, and there were some gangs in the movie, and they were awful. The way they were uh, accosting people people who were, they didn't even know, who would never call them a name, never give them any reason to dislike them. They were just targeting people along, they were riding along a car and targeting people walking down the sidewalks and scaring the heck out of them and, and hurting them also. Uh, so my prayer with you joining in with me today is for gangs, Father. There are so many gangs throughout the country and throughout the world. And they carry guns and everything, Father. And they're dangerous. And they're living for the devil, Father. And some of them are in gangs because they're afraid to try to get out. It's like the gang members and the, the leader of the gangs own them. So we, we pray, Father, for gangs, for you to do something supernatural. It's going to take some something supernatural to get them from such a stronghold as that. So we do pray for gang members, Father. We pray for those that are in gangs that don't want to be there. They realize they made a mistake. And uh, maybe some of them are listening to this show right now. We pray for you. God loves you and he cares about you. We pray for your mom and your grandma and your grandpa who are praying for you also. But Father, help these these men and women to get out of gangs. And women can be tougher than gangs too. So we pray for gang members all over the United States, Canada, Europe, communist countries, overseas, all the countries overseas. Everywhere, Father, we pray for gang members. Help them. Appear to them in their, in their dreams have Jesus appear to them in their dreams the way Jesus appears to Muslims and gets them saved. We pray for gang members today. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord Jesus. Oh, I'm so afraid I'm going to get cut off. So I just pray for each and every one of you. And Father, we love you. We love you. We praise you in Jesus' name. And help and help each one heal, heal those that are sick amongst us, especially this audience right now. Just be with them and give them grace and mercy. Amen and amen.